thank you for joining us today on the Zion Brethren in Christ YouTube channel. We are living in unprecedented times. This coronavirus has taken its toll on the population. There have been over 285,000 deaths worldwide and over 81,000 just here in the United States. Over 36 million people have filed for unemployment in the U.S. There are some businesses that are having to close up shop. Many restaurants are barely hanging on. And some people have been holed up at home for almost two months. Many are lonely, depressed, drained, weary, exhausted, sad, and struggling. Drug and alcohol abuse are on the rise as people try to find ways to cope with this pandemic. And now people are even revolting in the streets because they sense government oppression. They feel like their civil rights are being violated. People long to return to life as it was before COVID-19. Now, although things will reopen soon, I don't believe that life will ever exactly be the same for those of us who have lived through this plague. I know some people hate to hear that phrase, everything happens for a reason, but it's true nonetheless. There's no such thing as luck, fate, chance, or happenstance. Your life is not ruled by the stars, the planets, or the universe. God is the creator. He is the giver and sustainer of life, and everything that occurs here on planet Earth is part of his eternal plan. God is the one who orders our steps. Proverbs 16, 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. You see, God is the one who is ultimately in control. Proverbs 19.21 says, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Last week I heard a young woman say that she couldn't believe the Bible because she didn't want to think that she was not in control of her life. <laughs> I got news for you. You are not in control. Yes, you have daily choices to make, but in the grand scheme of things, you don't control squat. There is a God, and you're not him. God is sovereign. God is on the throne. God is in control. Yes, he takes your prayers and your choices into consideration, but his will is going to be accomplished here on the earth. So when things reopen, please don't go back to life as usual. You must consider the reason that God has allowed this pestilence to circle the globe. God is trying to get your attention. He wants you to surrender and submit your life to him. If you don't know God, he wants you to be saved. If you do know Jesus, remember he saved you to live a life of holiness and righteousness, a life that is beyond reproach so that you can bring glory to God our Father in heaven. So let me talk about three things that we can learn from this plague. First thing I want you to see is that natural disasters are not God's original design. Natural disasters are not part of God's original design. You see, when God created the heavens and the earth, it was a perfect world with no natural disasters. There was no sin and no suffering, no disease, no death. When God created the world, it was all good. As a matter of fact, after he finished creating, Genesis 1.31 says, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. When God created the heavens and the earth and everything in them, he looked at everything he had made and said, it was all good. And not just good, but very good. The world as God created it was not a world of sin and sickness or death and disease. God created this world to be very good. So what happened? Well, basically, sin happened. Sin entered into this good world that God created, and sin affected the natural world around us. Everything that we suffer in this life is a result of sin. Whether it's disease or whether it's disaster that results in death 
All of these things can be traced back to the sin of Adam. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. You see, the sin of Adam brought a curse on every person and on everything in all of creation. Now, the world is still a very beautiful place, but just imagine how beautiful it was at the beginning. But now we live in a sin-cursed world. That's why everything dies. That's why people die. That's why animals die. That's why uh, nature, things in nature die. Man was cursed to work by the sweat of his brow because of his sin, among the thorns and thistles. The woman's pain was increased in childbirth, and everything in nature suffered. So when you stop to think about it, natural disasters are not even natural at all. At least, they're not natural to the world that God created. Whenever you see disaster, whenever you see disease or death, it should remind you of the horrors of sin. See, as horrible as those things are to you, so your sin is even more horrible in the eyes of God. And God uses plagues like the coronavirus to wake you from your sleep and to get you to turn from your sin. Yes, coronavirus is deadly and can kill you. But without Jesus, your sin will not only bring physical death, but it will also bring eternal suffering to your soul. Jesus is the one and only proven antidote for the sin virus. Jesus paid for all of your sins on the cross. He was the only one qualified to do this because he was sinless. He was tempted in every way, the scripture says, and yet without sin. He lived that perfect righteous life that you and I could never live. He has provided everything you need through his death, burial, and resurrection. But you must receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Think about this. A gift is only good if it is received and used. And the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But it's only beneficial when you receive Jesus as Lord of your life and you give control of your life over to him. So remember, the natural disasters are not part of God's original design. They are a result of sin. And sin is why we need Jesus to save us. Another lesson that we can take away from this pandemic of the coronavirus is that natural disasters are part of God's judgment. Natural disasters are part of God's general judgment for sin on this world. Now, whether they are God's judgment for specific sins, we really can't say. Romans chapter 8, verses 20 through 22, speaks of God's general judgment on the earth. It says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. This passage teaches us that everything on earth, animals, inanimate objects, animate objects, everything was subjected to God's curse because of man's sin. Just like us, all of creation groans and longs to be free from this curse of sin. Once again, sickness and suffering, plagues and pestilence, death and disease are all part of God's general judgment for sin. Notice verse 20, it says, Creation was subjected to futility because of him who subjected it. You know, there's only one who has the power to subject all of creation to futility, and that is God. And that happened when sin entered into the world. Think about it. Adam had no idea how devastating and far-reaching the consequences of his sin would be. But that's the way sin is. Sin splatters. Do you ever stop and think about how your sin affects others? And so the next time you see a, a beautiful rose, I want you to remember that 
The thorns on that rose are a result of Adam's sin. Now, if you believe in the sovereignty of God, then that means God's in control of everything, even this coronavirus. And you're probably thinking, well, why doesn't he stop it? Well, God has a reason. He has a purpose for everything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. God wants to get your attention. God wants you to wake up. Stop squandering your time and prepare to meet your God. But because God is sovereign, we pray for his mercy. We pray for his protection from this dreaded disease. And we've seen God answer so many prayers so many times. But for now, he has allowed his judgment to go forth around the world. And he always has a purpose in what he does. And so natural disasters are a part of God's general judgment for sin. And we can't presume to know whether God's judgments are for specific sins. Let me give you, for instance, in Luke chapter 13, Jesus had something to say about those who blame disasters on the specific sins of others. Luke 13, 1 through 5, it says, There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 who, on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all of the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. There are two incidents referenced in this passage. Pontius Pilate, who was the governor of Judea at that time, obviously had slaughtered some Galileans while they were making their sacrifice in the temple. The other incident was where the Tower of Siloam fell and killed 18 innocent bystanders. And so when Jesus was asked about whether these disasters were judgments for their specific sins, Jesus was emphatic, you don't need to worry about that. You need to look within your heart and you need to repent of your own sins. You see, instead of pointing the finger at others when disaster strikes, Jesus said that these disasters ought to remind you that you need to repent of your own sins or else you will likewise perish. And so we know with certainty that natural disasters are part of God's general judgment for sin in this world. But what we don't know is whether disasters are God's judgment for specific sins. So rather than speculating, any disasters in the world should remind you of your need to repent and follow Jesus Christ. Another thing I want to share with you is this. Natural disasters are meant to turn you to God. When natural disasters occur, a lot of times people get mad at God. They blame God. Or else they they pray for protection And then once the disaster's over, they forget all about God. They don't stop and consider what it is that God wants them to learn through the disaster. First of all, natural disasters ought to remind you that this world is passing away. There's an interesting passage in 2 Peter 3, verses 11 through 13. It says, Since all of these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Whether you realized it or not, this world is passing away. And when the day of the Lord comes, everything on earth and in the skies will be set on fire and dissolved. But God has prepared a new heaven and a new earth where peace and righteousness dwells. This is only for those who've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And Peter says, since you know all of these things are going to happen, you who are believers should be living a life of holiness and righteousness while you wait. We're also admonished in the epistle of 1 John not to long for the things of this world, 
Because even followers of Jesus can sometimes be guilty of materialism and carnality. If you enjoy the evil pleasures of this world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Your focus as a believer should be walking in the Spirit rather than feeding this old body of flesh. And so natural disasters ought to remind you that this world we live in is passing away. And that you should not cling to the things of this world, but your focus must be on things of eternal significance. Natural disasters are also a warning of the coming judgment. Every natural disaster, every earthquake, every plague, every storm is a warning that there is a final judgment coming, where the wicked will be condemned and the righteous will stand. And who are the righteous? <laughs> well, if you stop and think about it, there's none of us righteous. No, not one, the Bible says. We're all sinners. But the only way you can be declared righteous in the sight of God is by placing your trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. You see, only those who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior are going to be spared from the coming judgment because Jesus took the wrath of God on the cross. Our sins were already judged. Jesus promised to return. Just like he came the first time, he's coming back again. And this is what he said concerning his second coming. In Matthew 24, verses 6 through 8, he says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of birth pains. Jesus also said that before his return, the gospel was going to be preached into all the world. And what's interesting is that this pandemic has caused thousands of pastors like me to begin preaching online, and we're just multiplying the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And so Jesus said as we draw closer and closer to his return, that day of judgment, that wars will increase, famines will increase, earthquakes will increase, pestilence will increase. But this is not yet the end. He said all of these things are just the beginning of the labor pains. Now, obviously, I've never given birth, but I was present at the birth of all my children. And these disasters are going to increase in frequency and with intensity, just like a woman's labor pains. They are a warning of the final coming judgment. And natural disasters are a reminder that it's time for you to put your trust in God. You got to understand God is not against you. God loves you. He wants you to turn to him. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. It says, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Turn back. That's repentance. Turning from your evil ways and turning to God and allowing him to have control of your life. Turn to God and live. So many people, they, they pray these foxhole prayers when they're in trouble, whenever calamity strikes, and they'll say things like, God, if you, if you just get me through this, I'm going to serve you forever the rest of my life. And then three, day, three days later, after it's all said and done, they just forget about God and they're back to their same old ways. See, you never really surrendered to Jesus. You were just looking for an escape from calamity. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if you're truly in Christ, you're a new creation. Your life is going to change. You're not going to be the same person. Don't ever forget that God loves you. He cares for you. Don't ever forget that even when you see people getting sick and dying around you. God is with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you if you just give your life to him. And you might be thinking, well, what about those Christians who got sick and died from COVID-19? Well, you got to understand this, that believers are not exempt from suffering in this world. Christians die from this virus too. Now, if that happens to you, does that mean that your faith or your trust was misplaced? No, that's when you need to remember what Romans 8, 37 through 39 says. 
No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you get that? Nothing will ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Neither death, nor life, nor plague, nor pestilence, nor sickness, nor suffering, nor anything in all of creation. Even in death, God is with you. And for the Christian, death is just a transition from this temporal life to eternal life in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. These natural disasters are a reminder, a good reminder for you to put all your trust in God. And one other thing, natural disasters help you remember what's really important in life. We have learned through this pandemic what is essential and what is not. There are lots of things we can live without. Natural disasters have an amazing way of helping you to focus on what's really important, like God, your family, your relationships, rather than a lot of the material things that we often focus on. When all of this is over, we need to be grateful to God that he spared our lives, he spared our families and our friends. So what can we learn from this COVID-19 pandemic? We, we know that natural disasters are not natural. They're not God's original design. Natural disasters are also part of God's general judgment for sin. And natural disasters are meant for you to repent, to turn to God. We are so blessed. God has spared us from the worst of this disease. I only know of one friend who contacted the coronavirus, and actually we only have two known cases here in Dickinson County, Kansas. And so we ought to be extremely grateful for that. God is sovereign. God is in control even during natural disasters. And so you've got to view this pandemic as an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to put your trust in God, an opportunity to turn from your sins, to follow Jesus, and to remember what's important in life. Don't blame God for your losses. And don't forget about God when everything reopens and life resumes. And please remember to pray fervently. Thank God for his mercy. Pray for wisdom for our leaders. Pray for healing for those who are sick during this time and for comfort for those who have lost their loved ones to this disease. And when things reopen, please don't go back to life as usual. Stop and consider. Think about the reasons why God allowed this pestilence to affect us in the first place. This is a warning. This is a wake-up call from God. He wants you to submit and surrender your life to Him. Listen, if you don't know God, God wants you to be saved. Jesus has already paid the price for your salvation. He's just waiting for you to pray to Him and ask Him to save you. And if you're not living for the Lord, this is the perfect time to make a change. And if you do know Jesus... Remember, he didn't save you just so you could get out of hell free. He saved you so you could live a life of righteousness and holiness and to bear good fruit and so prove to be his disciple and bring glory to God our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, we are so grateful to know you to call you Father, to know that you are our God and that you have called us to be a part of your family. And we're thankful for the great salvation we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also thank you for the Spirit of Christ that indwells us, all who are true believers. Your Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are truly children of God. And Lord, as your word has gone forth today, may it accomplish what you sent it to do. There are some watching right now who need to cry out to Jesus, confess their sins, and ask him to save them. There are others who 
Maybe they are believers, but they know that they're harboring secret sins, and they need to confess those sins and repent of those sins and get right with you. And even those who are living for you, Lord, we need to remember during this pandemic that you want to get our attention as well. You want to remind us that this world is passing away. And while we wait for your return, we ought to be living lives of righteousness and holiness so that we can be those vessels of honor fit for the master's use. And we pray all of these things in the wonderful matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.